Hi everybody, I'm Pia from Stitches and Scraps. Today I'm going to show you how to crochet the Holiday Sparkle Dog Bandana. This video goes along with a full written pattern and we'll be referencing the charted version in the video. You can find the pattern and the chart at the link in the description on this video if you're watching it on YouTube or in the blog post if you're watching it directly on my blog. The pattern comes in six different sizes, all the way from extra small to extra, extra large. Let's take a look at how to choose the right size. The important measurement when it comes to this bandana is the length of this casing up here. It's meant to fit around a collar, right? But you need about three inches of the collar still sticking out to do things like, you know, hang your tags and close and function as a collar. So measure your collar when it's open and then look at the size chart and find the size that's at least three inches smaller. Now these do have different widths of the casing. As they get bigger, I made them for thicker or wider collars. If your collar is extra wide or extra narrow, this part is, the width of this is totally adjustable. So don't worry about this at the width at this point. We just want to focus on the length for deciding on which size to make. For this tutorial, we'll be making the extra small size, which does have one fewer stripe than all the other sizes. There just wasn't enough room to fit in this extra white stripe and still look similar, right? So we'll talk more about that when we get there, but we're gonna be making the extra small size. Now the actual pattern is made in King Cole Glitz DK weight yarn. For the video, I'm gonna show it to you in a plain, not shiny, um, worsted weight yarn, just because it's easier to see. So let's get started. You're going to need a main color, which I'm using this green, and an accent color or contrast color, which I'm gonna be using this off-white. Let's take a closer look at the chart. So looking up here, you can see that right, right side rows are marked in black and wrong side rows are in blue. It actually is blue on the chart, but my printer is only black and white, so I colored it in with a colored pencil to highlight the rows. And that's just to help different, differentiate between the rows so that you can see each row separately. So we're gonna start right down here with row one and we'll worry about all the repeats and everything as we get going. Row one starts with this center chain and then one chain to get up to height, okay? So we're going to chain two and then in that second chain from our hook, we're going to do a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So let's do that. So we chain two. And then in that second stitch, that second chain, we're going to do a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. And you can use a magic loop for this if you prefer as well. That works just as well. Okay, so now I have a single crochet, a chain two, and a single crochet in the second chain from my hook. That's row one. That is a wrong side row. Let's look at row two. Now, notice I'm using the main color for both rows one and two, okay? Row two, I'm going to chain one to get up to the height and then do a single crochet in the first stitch and a chain one. Let's do that much. So chain one to get up to height and in the first stitch, I'm going to go single crochet and then chain one. Now that brings me to the chain two space at the middle. And in there, I'm going to do a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So let's do that. There's my chain two space. I'm going to go single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And we're always gonna do that in the middle. That's how we get our corner, okay? Now I've got one single crochet left. I'm going to chain one and then single crochet into that single crochet. So chain one and single, whoop, there we go. Single crochet into that stitch. Okay, that is my first two rows. Doesn't look like much yet, but it will get there. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit and let's look at row three. Row three in the pattern is the repeating row, and I've written everything as repeating row three. On the chart, it's a two row repeat because row three is a wrong side row and row four is a right side row, so you have to repeat both for the chart, um, but it's the same row. It's just flipped right and wrong side. 
So let's take a look here at the instructions, okay? First, we're go I'm ignoring the rest of this, just the first instruction. Work this many times in the main color. So I'm doing the smallest size, so I'm going to work two times in the main color, okay? So that means I go row three and four, and then five and six, all right? So let's do row three. Row three is single crochet, so chain one and single crochet in the first stitch. So chain one, single crochet in the first stitch. Okay, now this is where we're gonna be repeating here. We're going to chain one, and then we're going to single crochet in each chain one space, and then chain one and skip each of the stitches. So this stitch gave us the, our increase. Now we chain one, okay, now and every time we see a chain one space, which is just one time for this row, we're going to do a single crochet and a chain one. And then we're gonna skip the stitches and we're gonna keep doing that until we get to the center chain two space. So that is going to be our, remember, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Now, on the other side, again, when we get to the chain one space here, we're doing a chain one, we're skipping the stitch, and we're single crocheting into the chain one space. So let's do that. So chain one, skip the stitch, single crochet into the chain one space. Now when we get to that last stitch, we're gonna do an increase. By not skipping the stitch, we're going to chain one, and we're going to single crochet right into that stitch. So that's how we get our increases, is by adding that extra stitch at the edge, and that is row three. Let's do it again for row four. Chain one and turn, okay? Single crochet in the first stitch and chain one. Now in every chain one space, I'm going to do a single crochet and a chain one. Find the next chain one space, single crochet, chain one. Now look, I'm at the corner, the chain two space. So I'm going to do a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. Now as we go this way, I'm gonna do chain one to skip the stitch, and then single crochet, okay? Chain one to skip that stitch, and then single crochet in the space. Chain one, and then a single crochet at the end to add a stitch. And that's row four, and you can see how we're building our triangle. Now it's said to do that two more times, um, or not two more times, sorry. It's said to do that two times total, right? Here, work twice, work two times. So we've worked it once, now we're gonna work it again. So chain one and turn, this is row five. We're going to single crochet in this stitch, and chain one. Now in every chain one space, we're going to go single crochet, chain one. Skip that stitch, single crochet, chain one. Skip that stitch, single crochet, chain one. And now look, I've reached my chain two space. So in the chain two space, I go single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Okay, now again on the other side, do the chain one to skip over the stitch, single crochet in the space chain one to skip over the stitch, single crochet in the space. Chain one, skip over that stitch, single crochet, chain one, but now we're at the very last stitch, so we're not gonna skip over it, we're going to go right into it, single crochet. Okay, that was row five, now we're gonna do row six. Single crochet in the first stitch, chain one. In the space, single crochet, chain one to skip over that stitch, single crochet, chain one to skip over that stitch, single crochet, chain one to skip over that stitch, single crochet, chain one skips over that stitch, and that brings us to the center point. So we do single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and then chain one, skip over that stitch, single crochet. Chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet in that last space, and then chain one one more time, and single crochet into that very last stitch. So that is row six, and if you're losing track of your rows, an easy way to tell 
is every side, each side of the triangle has the same number of single crochet as the row number. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six single crochet, and we're on row six. So that's 12 single crochet total for that row, row but six single crochet on each side, okay? That's a great way to help you keep track of your rows. So now we've worked, if we look at this, we worked rows one and two, we worked three and four, five and six, so that was work this two times. Now the next instruction says then work zero times. Well, okay, that means we can ignore this one. And then work zero times, that means we can ignore this one again. These rows are for the extra stripe that the other sizes have. So if you look at this one, it only has the one white stripe before the border. This one has two white stripes. See that? So these extra rows, if you're doing any of the other sizes, you're going to work two rows in white and then four rows in your, or two rows in your contrast color and four rows in your main color. So you're repeating this one time in your contrast color and then twice in your main color. Um, but since we're skipping that set, that particular stripe, we can skip that for this smallest size. So now we're up to the next instruction, which is then work once in contrast color. Okay, so that means these two rows, we have to work one time in our contrast color. So let's go ahead and change colors. I'm going to undo the end of this stitch so that I can finish it with the new color. Okay. And that's changed colors for me. Now we can carry our unused yarn up the side because when we put the casing on, it's going to cover up any messiness. So go ahead and carry the yarn up. So I'm going to put my needle, my hook under that yarn and do my chain one that way to carry the yarn up. Okay. So I've done my chain one and I'm turning and it's the same row. You guys, it's the same thing. So we start with the single crochet in the first stitch. Tighten up my little things there. There we go. Chain one, single crochet in the first chain space, chain one, and now we start skip a stitch, single crochet in the chain space, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet in the chain space, chain one. We're going to keep doing that until we get to our center. And when we get to our center, we do single crochet. I'm going to move this because the white background makes it harder to see. There we go. Single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. Then we come down this side again, chain one to skip a stitch and single crochet in the chain space. Chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet in the chain space. And we keep doing this same pattern all the way across. And then the way we add stitches is when we get to the end, we're going to do a single crochet in this stitch. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're done with row seven. Now this repeat was two rows, right? So we have to do one more row. So let's do two, row eight, chain one and turn, single crochet, chain one, and now we single crochet in each of the chain spaces, chain one to skip each of the stitches until we get to the center. Then it's single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the center, and then we continue the same pattern of single crochet, chain one. And then the end, we do that last chain one, but we don't skip the last stitch. We're going to work into it to give us that increase. Okay, so that was our repeat in the contrast color. So that was this instruction here, work once in contrast color. We worked once in contrast color. Now we work once in the main color. So we've got to do these two rows one more time in the main color. So again, I'm going to undo this last stitch. I'm going to switch over to my main color. Let's get it nice and twisty in there. There we go. And I'm going to finish the stitch in my main color. Now I know I'm going to use my contrast color again at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and carry it up instead of cutting it. 
So I'm going to carry it up like that as I do my chain, okay? And again, single crochet in the first stitch, chain one, and now we start going into the spaces and skipping all of the stitches. And it's single crochet, chain one. Basically, every time you skip over a stitch, you should have a chain one space. Okay, now I've come to the center, so I do my single crochet, chain two, single crochet right in the center. Okay, and we start again, chain one. Don't forget that chain one. That one's easy to miss because you've just done that weird chain two thing that's different from the rest of the row, so it's easy to forget that chain one after it. And then at the end, I do another chain one even though I'm not skipping, and I add a stitch here, and that's how we get that increase. Okay, so now we're gonna do that one more time. Chain one and turn, single crochet, chain one, and now we start in the chain spaces again. Okay, here's the end where I'm gonna put a stitch right here. Okay, and actually I'm gonna carry this up in that stitch a little bit, and I'm going to be changing colors, so I'm just not going to finish it. So I've worked once in the contrast color and I worked once in the main color, okay? So now we're done with this repeat. We've done all these instructions. So we can go on to the final repeat, which is one more row that's actually the same as row three and four, okay? And then it's this edging row with the puff stitches. So let's do this one more row, but that's gonna be in our contrast color. So we're gonna go ahead and switch to our contrast color, okay? And we're not fastening this off yet because we're gonna need it again for the edging. So I'm gonna to continue to carry this up. Okay, carry that up, turn my work, and I'm doing one more row of what we're used to here. So single crochet in the first stitch to add a stitch, chain one, and now we start going into the chain spaces. And then chain two, and single crochet in that same chain two space to make that corner. chain one and single crochet into that last stitch. And that is this row here. So now we're doing the edging row. So the edging row starts with, notice there's no chain up here, right? The edging row starts with a slip stitch into the first chain one space. So we're not gonna chain or anything. We're not gonna do anything here. We're just going to slip stitch in the first chain one space. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work a front post puff stitch around each of the single crochets and a chain to cross over each of the chains, okay? So let's go through that. So first thing we're gonna do, don't chain at all, just turn and do a slip stitch into this first chain one space. Now, all the way across for all of the single crochets, we're going to do a front post puff stitch. So the puff stitch, we're going to yarn over, and now the front post part, we insert our hook from front to back, and then out the front again, around the post of that stitch. And you'll know you're doing it the right way if everything's at the front. A back post, your hook would be at the back. So this means it's a front post, okay? We're going to yarn over and pull up a loop around the post of that stitch. Now I have three loops on my hook. We're going to do it one more time. So yarn over, insert your hook around the post of that stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, okay? Now I have five loops on my hook. Now I'm going to yarn over and pull through all five loops. Chain one to skip the chain one space, okay? and do the same thing in the next stitch. So yarn over, around the post, pull up a loop, yarn over, around the post, pull up a loop. Five loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all five, chain one. And we're going to do that on every one of these stitches all the way across to that chain two space. I've reached the center. I've got one more single crochet. I'm still going to do a puff stitch in that last single crochet before the chain two space, okay? So I'm still going to do the front post puff around this stitch here. 
and then chain one. Now, so that was that front post puff and the chain one. Now in the chain two space, I'm going to do a regular puff because there's no post here to work around. So the regular puff is the same thing, but just into the chain space. So yarn over, insert your hook in the chain space, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert your hook in the chain space, pull up a loop. Five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all five. Okay, and then you chain one and we start over again. So chain one, and we're gonna do puffs all the way across to the end. I'm nearly finished. I've come, I've done the last chain one here, and I've come to the, the second to last single crochet. I'm going to go ahead and do my front post puff around this one, okay? And now I'm at the last chain one space. I'm not going to chain one, because we wanna make the end look like the beginning. At the beginning, there's no chains here, right? We did a slip stitch and then went straight into the puff. So here, there's no chains. We did a, we're going to finish the puff and then we're gonna go straight into a slip stitch, into that chain one space, and then we ignore that very last stitch. And what that does is it gives us kind of a curved edge here so it's nice and smooth and not boxy. Now we are done with our contrast color. So we can go ahead and fasten off our contrast color, but, What's left to do is the casing, and I'm gonna to wanna to pick up the main color again, right? So I'm not going to do this slip stitch in my contrast color after all. I'm gonna rip that out. I'm gonna go ahead and change colors. And when you're changing colors in a slip stitch, that basically means do the slip stitch with the new color. So I'm doing the slip stitch with the new color, just like that. And then I'm going to cut the contrast color and we'll go on to the casing. So we have finished our triangle, and that's the end of the chart. The chart does not include the casing, so we're finished with the chart. And there's our triangle. Now we're gonna go and do the casing. To start our casing, we need to work evenly across the top edge of the triangle. For this size, we need to work 23 stitches evenly spaced across. Now, this doesn't hold true for all the sizes, it's a little bit off, but for this size, that works out to approximately one stitch for every row, plus one in the center. Because we worked 12 rows, but this last row didn't go all the way to the edge because we had that slip stitch. So that's 11 rows across here, 11 plus one in the center plus 11 makes 23. For some of the larger sizes, it's a few stitches less than that, so you have to just spread them out evenly across, but it's easy for this size. So you're going to chain one, then one single crochet in this white stripe, two in this green stripe. Notice I'm working around any carried yarns up here. So two for this next white stripe. Then we have six rows here, so I'll do six across this section. One in the center. And then the same thing down the other side for another 11. There's 23 stitches nicely spaced out. Now all we're going to do for the remainder of the casing is work single crochet in each stitch across. The pattern says how many rows to do to get the height you need. So for this size, I have to do a total of 13 rows. So I'm gonna do those rows, and it's just, again, chain one, turn, single crochet in every stitch all the way across. So I'm gonna do all 13 rows total and then come back. So I finished all 13 rows to make my casing, and the idea is that this should be twice the size of your collar plus about an inch and a half. And that'll give you, once it's folded over and sewed down, that'll give you the size of your collar plus about three quarters of an inch to wiggle it in there. So you can expand this or extend this as far as you need to for wider collars. So don't worry about the width of your collar when choosing a size because you can make this casing as short or as tall as you need it to be to fit your collar. The length of it is what matters here more than the, more than the height. So I've fastened off my yarn and I left a nice long tail for sewing. It's approximately three times the length, actually I think I did four, I left a little too much, but you need about three times the length of the top 
to be able to sew it in place. Um, leave yourself a little extra, that's better than having less. Um, and now we need to fold it over to form our casing. So we wanna make sure that the seam, the top edge, ends up on the wrong side of the work. I'm gonna zoom way in so you can see these stitches really up close. This is the puff stitches that we did, right? So this is the right side of our work where those puffs are. If I flip this over, you see the ridge that was formed by the tops of the stitches from the stitches that we worked around. So here's our nice puffs, and then here's the stitches that we worked around, and here's their tops. When you see this ridge, that's the back side of the fabric. That's the wrong side of the fabric. We're going to fold this down, and you can weave in the ends if you want first to get them out of the way, or you can do them later. I'm gonna turn this around because I like looking at it this way. We're gonna fold this over, and if you want to clip it in place, you can, um, or you can just kind of press it a little bit and hold it as we go along. And I'm gonna thread this yarn onto my needle. I've gone ahead and put a pin in this just at the edge, just to hold it in place. For the longer ones, I strongly recommend using some clips or pins all the way along the length to make sure you get that nice even fold without any like twisting or skewing. Now I'm going to line up the tops of these stitches with the bottom of the first row of the casing. See the bottoms of these stitches here where we worked across the edge of the triangle? That's where I'm going to sew into. So I'm just gonna line them up and then start whip stitching across. For the first stitch at the edge, I like to do an extra stitch around the side like this. Then I'm gonna continue whip stitching across. I've gone all the way across, and now I'll make another extra stitch around the side. And that's it. All that's left to do is weave in the ends. And that's how you make the Holiday Sparkle Pet Bandana. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, or leave me a comment. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great videos. Thanks for watching.